So if you ask me, it takes about 13 weeks or 13 games to really know if an NFL team is actually going to be a Super Bowl or playoff contender in that given season. And the first 13 games for the Tennessee Titans have seen a little bit of, you know, there's been some strange things. You have a couple losses against the Jets and against the Texans midway through the season, but you also have some big wins in Indianapolis and in L.A. against the Rams in back-to-back weeks. You sweep your season series against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You beat Seattle in Seattle. Uh, You sweep the season series against Indy. Uh, You know, you're putting up a good season so far if you're a Tennessee Titans fan. However, there are a few things that need to be worried about with this team and with what is going on with this team as a whole. So this Ryan Tannehill thing for the Tennessee Titans, I would almost go as far as to say it's almost a guarantee that Ryan Tannehill is not going to be back next year in Tennessee. That has to do with the fact that He hasn't been sacked this much since his second year in Miami. Um, He probably is going to get sacked 50-plus times this year. And Ryan Tannehill is getting to be an old man. He's going to be 34 next year. He's going to be a guy that's owed like $20 million, something like that, that contract that they signed with him. Wow, I undershot his contract a lot. He is getting paid $38.5 million next year. And if you're the Tennessee Titans – you have, I think you almost have an obligation to some of the players on your team. I mean, his 2022 salary becomes fully guaranteed. Never mind, it already became fully guaranteed. So he's going to, he got paid 30, wow, he got paid $38 million. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I think you almost owe it to the rest of your team to move on from, 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 from Ryan Tannehill because you have some guys who are giving it their all right now. There's reports that Derrick Henry is going to come back before the end of this season. That's how hard some of these guys are playing right now. Taylor Lewan tore his ACL last year, and he's been having issues with that left knee. I think it's his left knee. There's guys on this team who are playing injured. There's guys on this team who are playing below their, you know, 100% mark that they should be at when they're actually on the field. And I would say that Ryan Tannehill is really holding them back this year. Now, there's a couple other things with the Tennessee Titans that I do want to talk about uh, outside of Ryan Tannehill's struggles. AJ Brown and the AJ Brown and Julio Jones uh, gimmick—it's not working. Um, some of that is injuries. Some of that is also—I don't know—maybe Julio Jones isn't as as good as he once was i hate saying it because he's one of the best wide receivers in the nfl just off a pure like intangible standpoint if you were to build an nfl wide receiver you're building julio jones however through 14 weeks he has zero touchdowns he's been on and off the field i don't think he's played in back-to-back games all year um you know it's just not working and aj brown hasn't looked incredible either uh 615 yards in 10 games Eh, it's good, but they've had to rely on other guys in the passing game. And when they've had to do that, it's not necessarily great because they don't have a tight end. Their number one tight end is Jeff Swaim with 184 yards. Are you kidding me? Uh, their number one receiver outside of Julio and A.J. Brown is Nick Wisbrook Akeen, who I believe is a rookie. He maybe has been there a couple years. I don't know, but he has 328 yards. He's the, he's the leader in touchdowns for the team, tied with A.J. Brown and tied with – uh, Nicole Pruitt, which that's another situation, but I, they just don't have a passing game right now. And a lot of that has to do with Ryan Tannehill's struggles, but it also has to do with the fact that AJ Brown and Julio Jones just can't stay on the field. And if you're the Tennessee Titans, I honestly would consider not bringing Julio Jones back next year, because when you look at what he's going to be owed over the next couple of years, you're talking about a guy that you're going to be paying $14 million in 2022 and in 2023. Not only is that a big figure, but that's a big figure for a guy who's going to be 33 and 34 years old in those two seasons. And we're seeing right now at age 32, he just can't seem to stay on the field. I would honestly go as far as to say Ryan Tannehill and Julio Jones aren't going to be back next year. So with that being said, I, I just don't see offensively how this Tennessee Titans team can actually be considered a contender. Even if Derrick Henry comes back, which that would be an incredible feat, um, and that's no pun intended because he had a foot injury, but if you do research on the sort of injury that he had, it was a Jones fracture, which is like 
if you're looking at your foot, it's like it's on the outside of your foot, kind of like right where your toe and your foot meet. Uh, that's a that's a it's a tough injury to come back from, especially as an athlete. And there's you know if you read about it, there's some people that say that the injury never heals. Um, it's almost not even really necessarily. Uh, it's almost not recommended for normal people to get surgery on that, but. You know, for athletes, it's recommended. I don't know how that really works, but that's what happened. Um, if he does come back, there's no way he's going to be the same leading rusher in the NFL that he was rushing for, I believe, like 116, 118 yards a game. There's no way he's coming back to that. If he does, even I, I just don't see what they do because we've seen the past two seasons with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, with Derrick Henry at running back, what that looks like in the playoffs. When you get down – a touchdown and a field goal when you're down 10 plus points you can't just run the ball into the ground because you're losing time you're losing you're losing you're losing the ability to put points up on the board and i love derrick henry i think he's probably a top 10 nfl player at the moment but the value that is added when you just run derrick henry into the ground it obviously has been a negative this year because they lost him for half the season uh even if he comes back it it, it, it was a negative um and in the playoffs, it's even worse because when you have to rely on Ryan Tannehill to make a lot of plays, we're seeing it right now. He can't do it. And especially when you don't have two top receivers or at least one of them on the field, it makes it even worse for Ryan Tannehill, and the offense just looks terrible. Now I will say, the the Tennessee Titans defense has put up a, a, a pretty good season. Uh, when you look at the numbers between – uh, the total number of plays that have been ran against them and the negative plays that they have generated, negative plays being tackles for loss, sacks, interceptions, pass deflections, and fumble recoveries. You're looking at a team that has forced 178 negative plays. They have 51 tackles for loss, 32 sacks, 13 interceptions, 68 pass deflections, and 14 fumble recoveries. That's almost 22% of offensive plays result in a negative play. And a lot of those negative plays are either plays that – you know, change hands in terms of giving the ball back to the Tennessee Titans, or they're just drive killers with those sacks and pass deflections. With that being said, they are the third most penalized team on the defensive side of the ball in the NFL, and teams score on about 40% of drives against the Tennessee Titans. So, you know, there, there has been an issue with pass rush for this team before. It seems like a couple of guys are trying to fix that between Harold Landry and Jeffrey Simmons. I think between the two of them, they're combining for about 18, 18 and a half sacks. So between those two guys, it's good. But outside of Danico Autry, I don't think there's another guy who has more than two sacks on that team. Um, they just don't have depth at that pass rusher spot. They don't have depth on the defensive side of the ball. Yes, I know their middle linebacker spot has been, you know, they haven't had the same guy there for three weeks in a row all season. But, you know, if you're Mike Vrabel, you got to figure out ways around that. They just haven't been able to necessarily. Um, they're a decent defense. You know, Kevin Byard's a good player. I think Christian Fulton's going to develop into a solid corner, maybe a good number two corner. But, you know, all of this is adding up to just saying the Tennessee Titans, man, they're they're real pretenders in the NFL right now. They're, they're nowhere near contending. And it's going to suck because they're going to win the division. I mean, I'm a Houston Texans fan. They're in our division. And it sucks to say because I've <laughs> I've experienced the exact same things as a Houston Texans fan. Knowing my offense sucks. Knowing my defense is no good. But we're still somehow going to win the division because our division is just garbage. Um, so if you're a Tennessee Titans fan, like, soak up all, all of this season. Soak up your number one division crown because I guarantee you this team is going to look a lot different next year. And... It's going to end real ugly this this postseason when they get drummed by, like, 20 points by somebody because I hate to say it, but it's probably guaranteed to happen.